In this video, I'm going to create a function in C that's going to generate a random double value. So the first thing I'll do is include stdlib.h because this library includes the rand function. And the rand function is going to return a random integer value between 0 and rand max, where rand max is a constant value and it's some very, very large integer. Precisely what it is will actually vary from one library to the next. If we do a printf here, we could actually check out what it is with this library. So we'll say printf percent d slash n rand max, and we'll run this, and we'll see that rand max is this very, very large integer value here. So what we're going to do to produce a random double value is actually use rand and then manipulate what we get back into a double value that's within a range that we want it to be. So let's create the function now. Here I'll say double rand range, double min, and double max. So the function is going to accept min and max values as arguments, and it's going to produce a double value that's going to be in this range, and it's going to be returned from the function. So we'll provide a definition of the function down here now. So what we'll do first is use rand to get back a random number between 0 and 1. And then we're going to keep on manipulating that value until we have it in the range of min and max. So here I'll say double random is equal to double rand divided by rand max. So remember, rand here is going to produce an integer between 0 and rand max. If we were to take that integer and divide it by rand max, it's necessarily going to be a number between 0 and 1. So the reason why we have this double here is we're doing a type conversion. We're converting the integer returned by rand to a double value. And the reason why we're doing that is we want to make sure that integer division doesn't occur. We want double division to occur. Because otherwise, if we take the integer that we get back from rand and we divide it by rand max, we would get 0 or 1 exactly. By converting it to a double, we're going to get back numbers like 0 0.4567, where we're going to have decimal places here. It's not going to be either 0 or 1 exactly. It's going to be some number in the range of 0 to 1. So what we're going to do now is take this number and continue to manipulate it so that we get it in the range of min and max here. So right now we have a number between 0 and 1. What we'll do next is take that and multiply it by max minus min. So we'll say here, double range is equal to max minus min times random. So what we're doing here is we're taking a number that's between 0 and 1, and we're multiplying it by max minus min. This is going to give us a number in the range of 0 to max minus min. Because if we take the 0 here and we multiply it by max minus min, it's still going to be 0. If we take the 1 here and we multiply it by max minus min, it's going to be max minus min. And then we'll get the whole range of values in between 0 and max minus min when we multiply the number in between 0 and 1 by max minus min. So the next thing we'll do is shift it up so this range is going to be between min and max. And we'll do that by adding min. So here I'll say double number is equal to min plus range. So by adding min to this range here, we're going to get a range of min to max. And that's because if you add min to zero, you get min. And if you add min to max minus min, you're left with max. So now we have a number that's in the range of min to max, and we can just return that number. So here we'll say return number. So now we can test this function out. So we'll delete this here. And the first thing I'm going to do is actually include a library called time.h. Because before we test this function, there's one more important thing we have to do. We have to seed the random number generator. So C has what's called pseudo random number generation. What that means is that unless we provide a unique seed value each time our program runs, the random numbers will actually be the same each time our program runs. So we're going to use the current time as the seed. 
Here we'll say srand time null. So time, when it's past the argument null, will return the current time. We're going to pass that to the srand function to use as our seed value. That's going to ensure that each time a program runs, it's given a different seed. Because each time a program runs, the time will be different. So now that we've done this, we'll actually test the function here. We'll make a loop that generates a bunch of random numbers in the range of negative five to five. We'll say here four int i is equal to zero, i is less than 50, i plus plus. And we'll do a printf of the values generated by rand range when we call it with negative five and five. So if we save this here and run it, we should get a whole bunch of random numbers in the output in the range of negative five to five. And that's exactly what we get here. So we've successfully written a function in C that can generate a random double value and a specified range. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.